Bacteria are living things that have only one cell. Under a microscope, they can look like spheres, rods or spirals. They are believed to be the first life forms to appear on our planet and can live virtually everywhere. Although we can't see them, the total bacterial biomass found on Earth is greater than that of all the plants and animals combined. Our own bodies are known to have more than 1 billion bacteria associated with them, so we contain more bacterial cells than we have human cells making up our bodies. Most of these bacteria are harmless or beneficial. Generally, we live together in peace or symbiosis with bacteria. However, when bacteria get somewhere they are not usually found, they can cause harmful infections from sore throats to deadly infections in our blood. Fortunately, doctors can use antibiotics to fight these infections. The discovery of antibiotics and their power to fight bacteria began with Alexander Fleming in the 1920s. By the 1950s, the use of antibiotics by doctors revolutionised the treatment of previously untreatable infectious diseases, and to date, antibiotics have been used to save millions of lives. This improvement of human health has allowed people to live longer and for many people to have life-saving or life-changing treatments such as cancer chemotherapy, transplants and joint replacements. Antibiotics work hand-in-hand hand with the body's natural defences to help clear infection. In general, antibiotics either kill the bacteria or stop them from growing. Although antibiotics have been used for many years with beneficial effects, we are on the brink of losing this remarkable resource due to the development of antimicrobial drug resistance in many disease-causing bacteria. So, what is antimicrobial drug resistance? This is the ability of bacteria, often known as microbes, to resist the effects of antibiotic drugs. It occurs when bacteria evolve, which happens through a process called natural selection. For a bacterium, a mutation which makes it resistance to a certain antibiotic gives it a survival advantage over others. Exposure to antibiotics then leaves only the resistant bacteria alive. Bacteria can also exchange drug-resistant genes. Spread of genes and or bacteria leads to entire communities of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. The other major factor in the increase in the numbers of antibiotic-resistant bacteria is spread of resistant bacteria from person to person or between or from non-human sources in the environment. For example, bacteria that contaminate food can become resistant because of the use of antibiotics in agriculture. The use of antibiotics in livestock in some countries outside Europe can improve the growth of animals and protect from infection. However, this can be poorly regulated and abused. Additionally, antibiotics can also be found as environmental pollutants, promoting the development of antibiotic resistance miles away from any human use. Once a multidrug resistant bacterium evolves, all it takes is one plane ride for it to spread across the globe. Why is this issue important? The World Health Organization's 2014 report on global surveillance of antimicrobial resistance revealed that antibiotic resistance is no longer a prediction for the future. It is happening right now across the world and it is putting at risk the ability to treat common infections in the community and hospitals. Antimicrobial resistance associated with common infections, for example a urinary tract infection, has reached a level where standard treatments do not work. These statistics show the cost to human life and economic burden caused by this problem. Antimicrobial resistant infections currently claim at least 50,000 lives each year across Europe and the US alone, with many hundreds of thousands more dying in other areas of the world. However, reliable estimates of the true burden are scarce. Research shows that a continued rise in resistance by 2050 would lead to 10 million people dying every year and a reduction of 2% to 3.5% in gross domestic product. It would cost the world up to 100 trillion US dollars. This equates to an extra 1 billion in expenditure, which most economies cannot support, putting even greater stress on medical care professionals. Without urgent, coordinated action, the world is heading towards a new antibiotic era in which some common infections, such as urine infections, can lead to untreatable infections in the bloodstream that kill. So, what is the solution? 
Antimicrobial resistance is a complex problem driven by many factors. Coordinated action is required to minimise the rise and spread of antimicrobial resistance. Scientists are working to stay one step ahead of the bacteria and the World Health Organisation has recommended that it's a priority to develop new treatments. Scientists are also investigating alternative solutions, such as the increased use of vaccines to prevent infections. New diagnostic tests which show when there is a bacterial infection are also under development. Despite the major push by the science community to tackle this problem, there are lots of things people can do to tackle antimicrobial resistance. These include A. Hand washing and avoiding close contact with sick people to prevent transmission of infections. B. Getting vaccinated and keeping vaccinations up to date. C. Using antimicrobial drugs only when they are prescribed by a healthcare professional. D. Completing the full treatment course even if you feel better. And E. Never sharing antimicrobial drugs with others or using leftover prescriptions. Importantly, although drug-resistant bacteria are a major problem, we all have to remember that bacteria are more often our friends than our enemies. We need them as much as they need us, so learning more about how bacteria interact with us could be the key to tackling this major health issue. If you want further information about how you can help, please see this website.